Welcome to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Patrick Ferry, and welcome to our show. All right, guys. So today's episode, it's just going to be uh, me. Austin is unable to make it. Just have some work uh, obligations there. Um, so I'll be covering all the exciting news that happened this past week and uh, weekend, um, especially in the championship where one of our American midfielders scored his third goal in five games and is just on fire. Um, another player, also an American starlet over in uh, Dortmund, had a, a mixed performance with some really positives, but also uh, one negative, which we'll cover. And last but not least, um, we have a player, an exciting outside back that has been linked to Bayern Munich. So all that and more in this week's episode. All right, guys. So to start off this episode, we're going to talk about that exciting player who scored his third goal um, in five games. And that is Dwayne Holmes over for Derby County. They actually picked up an exciting 3-2 win over Swansea, who's ahead of them in the table. I think Swansea sat maybe ninth or eighth. Um, but yeah, Derby is in 13th place. Um, only a point or two separates them from their top uh, sides in the next four or five slots. So uh, not really where they were last year, but also really picking up uh, since the beginning of the season. They've done much better in the second half. And a lot of that success in at least the most recent weeks and month uh, can be attributed to Dwayne Holmes' play. So, yeah, again, Dwayne uh, got another start. And uh, just to provide you guys some stats here, um, he had an exciting goal, which we'll cover. Um, just one shot there. But 81% of the uh, passing was complete, completed. Um, two out of two successful dribbles and also two interceptions. So I just wanted to read you guys those stats because he has really made an impact, uh, especially more recently on the stat sheet, which we weren't necessarily seeing um, in the beginning while well, he was playing really well. But um, I'm sure from, you know, Berhalter's side in the U.S. wanted to see a little more production. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, let's uh, go through the goal here. Again, I don't know what it is with Dwayne Holmes and volleys, but uh, it's awesome. Uh, just to describe it for you guys, um, I think uh, the ball is crossed in the box and one of the defenders in Swansea uh, ducked down kind of like a low header to get it out, but uh, not placed very properly, right actually in the middle um, of the field there and right in the middle of the box with 18. Uh, Dwayne Holmes was there to uh, you know rip one low, um, beat the goal, I think, near post there on the right. And it was a nice volley, nice rip, clean shot. And again, that's uh, three goals in five games, which I've said a few times here, but just want to stress how important that is. And I think overall, I think he has maybe it's three goals and I could be wrong, like two assists or so. Yeah, two assists in the last five games. So yeah, um, Dwayne's been performing excellently. Uh, in the formation, it seems like he's been in that cam role or that kind of central mid uh, shifting along with Rooney sometimes in 4-4-1. Four, four, um, so it'll be interesting to see how that can translate, uh, like we've mentioned a lot with Austin here too. We discuss on how he would fit with the U.S. national team. He'd provide the extra spark and energy, uh, you know, that creativity that we need. Um, you know, it'd be interesting to see how he kind of links up with all of our uh, young youngsters there um, because, you know, We've been known to play as the national team that 4 4 3 or that 4 2 3 1, but mainly the 4 3 3 uh, under Berhalter's system there. And um, obviously, you have rolled on, it seems to be the comparison. Um, and then even uh, Leggett, too. Um, but I, I don't know. I think Wayne, especially, um, you know, deserves a call up in March, which we've said, you know, week after week, especially on this show, but um, especially his performances. Uh, now is close to these two friendlies coming up and then everything else we have. Uh, this is a perfect time for him to get, uh, you know, assimilated with the team in the camp there and really make a statement and show why he needs to you know, be a part of the senior team moving forward in this new era that we have. Uh, he has really all the tangibles and the tools. You can see it. It'd just be exciting to see, uh, fingers crossed, injury-free and consistency how he does uh, proceed, you know, for the rest of the season with Derby County. Uh, there's a lot of games still to finish off here. And if you can put together another really consistent season, it'd be exciting to see uh, where Dwayne goes. Um, so we'll kind of keep an eye on you for that. And I'm sure we'll be talking about Dwayne in the future here. Now we're going to shift over uh, to Germany and talk about an exciting prospect 
uh, Gio Reyna, um, who's been, you know, really lighting it up with his substitute and cameos uh, for Borussia Dortmund's first team. Uh, he's had a rapid rise. Um, and I know Austin covered that exciting goal last week, but, you know, I have to touch on it quick. How incredible was that? Um, so nonetheless, for this game, uh, he came on uh, in the second half, and I think it was Julian Brandt uh, was injured, so that's a little concerning. I think they have Royce now, Brandt injured. So Dortmund's kind of got some uh, injuries here. Um, they did bring in Embry Chan, a few other signings, but nonetheless, they saw some injuries, and I think it was the 46th minute he subbed in, and not too long into that, um, Jaden Sancho actually um, you know, had a goal there that was disallowed or called back from VAR uh, because it looked like uh, they caught – Giorena pulling a defender back, uh, which I'm sure is very frustrating for the team. That could have been the third goal. Um, they ended up losing 3 2 to Byron Leverkusen, so could have been crucial, but again, I uh, shouldn't entirely blame that. Um, the entire game, I should say, on Reina, but that was definitely a uh, something that an amateur, not an amateur, excuse me, someone that, you know, with a youth or inexperience um, might do pull back in a foul in that situation. I know with uh, you know, a pre-VAR era that wouldn't have even been called. But, um, you know, with VAR, I I still don't think um, that would be a huge hindrance, especially with these injuries going forward. I don't think, uh, you know, the coach there at Dortmund would be like, oh, it's a horrible mistake, you're done. I think we're still going to see a Geo maybe even more um, with these injuries, especially the rest of the game. He, he created some chances, some solid dribbles completed. I think he had a you know, 100% a success rate for dribbles. Um, but yeah, I think overall they, they had a pretty good performance you know, for that second half. It was just, I think he had a shot off the post too, but it was just that, that crucial call, uh, that foul they had pulling back the defender, but he'll learn from that over time. And again, what I meant is not, not amateur, but you know, just the inexperience with the first team and he's still young. Um, even just following that Christian Pulisic timeline in that youthful stage, just making his rise. So, so rapidly. So we'll kind of have to, again, see where this goes for Reina. It'd be kind of interesting. And I'd love to, you know, get your take on this too, all you yeah viewers, but uh, would we potentially see, is it too early? Do you think that Gio Reina could be involved uh, with the senior team in the March or one or two friendlies? Would we see him even get in that, an appearance? That might be too much, but I mean, he's performing at a pretty high level, not starting yet, but it seems like he's right in the cusp and could get a start. Um, you know, this weekend coming up. So that's a huge, huge point we want to monitor and see how he kind of progresses through that because um, he's he's been performing, you know, at a high level. So again, that's that's all on Geo. Just wanted to mention um, with some injuries that you guys might want to tune into Dortmund this weekend. Now we're going to head over to uh, Belgium and talk about Chris Durkin. Uh, so we had some exciting news. Just want to quickly mention he scored his first goal for Sintruden in a 5-2 win. He actually scored in, I think it was like the 95th minute stoppage time there against Yupin. And yeah, he scored on his birthday, his 20th birthday. So a uh, you know, nice birthday present and a great performance. Um, he's been kind of killing it in the last six straight matches he's played and been involved, a key piece for Sintruden. And it seems like this really this loan move is really coming along. As the beginning where he was still finding himself in the team in a new league, new environment. Uh, he's really carving out a nice uh, season here over in Belgium. So I know he's on loan from DC United, but just wanted to quickly mention, um, you know, he, to describe the goal, I guess it was a nice buildup. Um, one of the attackers had a little dummy and uh, Durkin was on the right side there and just slotted it past the goal in the left, but it was a calm finish. Uh, they were already up by, I think it was four or two then. Um, so he made it five, but again, nonetheless, his first goal, and we can only hope from uh, good things and positive things going forward for uh, Chris in the in the Belgium league. So, yeah, all the best to him. Now we're going to head back to Germany and talk about uh, you know exciting player we're happy to have back and been talking about the last few episodes, and that's Tyler Adams uh, for RB Leipzig. Um, so yeah, Adams actually uh, you know started and played the full ninety. Um, in a right wing back position at a 0 0 draw against Bayern Munich. So that was a really, really crucial match. Uh, both teams kind of wasted opportunities. Um, there's some good moments in the game, but um, that would have been a huge win for Leipzig to jump over the multiple times in a row champions of the Bundesliga uh, Bayern. Um, so they're still trailing by one point. Um, it's a pretty tight race, and there's still some game time to go, but 
that would have been a nice win to have. But yeah, just wanted to um, run through some Tyler Adams stats for you. Uh, so we actually had two aerials, one, uh, just one shot, uh, two interceptions and three tackles. So it was kind of an interesting time frame on the on the flank and what I was what reading about uh, the, the game overall because I wasn't able to catch all of it. But it looked like uh, he was kind of isolated there, right? And, uh, you know, worry about all the uh, the pace from Davies. And uh, I think Coman came on and gave him some little trouble, but he still held it down and, you know, held a clean sheet and still uh, just looked tough out there and composed, um, was playing the right passes and kind of, you know, showed he belonged um, with the rest there in the Bundesliga and has really emerged as a key player for Leipzig. Again, he's been playing in that position. Just, I know um, Austin's touched on it too, due to some injuries and just moving around. And he's so versatile that they can kind of throw him back in there um, just because, you know, especially against Bayern, you want to have a strong defense and make sure, uh, especially with on the flanks there with Coman and the other speed that they have, uh, you don't get it bur- burned too much. So, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> it was... You know, an interesting game uh, for Tyler Adams, and I just wish you know <laughs> everyone would get healthy there um, at Leipzig, and we could see him back in that that six role that we really wanted to see uh, Adams in the midfield with. Um, so, yeah, again, just wanted to update you with it on that situation. Um, it is nice to see Tyler back, uh, getting the full ninety consistency there as we head into March and some of these other crucial games. Uh, just to see him with the U S and how he assimilates and can take his game here to the national team after that long labor from injury. So a lot to be excited for and Leipzig still hanging in there again, like I said, only one point away. So if they can get some better performances, um, some of their players back and healthy uh, for the end of the Bundesliga season, uh, that'd be great for Tyler Adams. Love to see him lift that trophy. I know Austin would too. And uh, yeah, now we're going to shift gears over to uh, the Netherlands and touch on Serginho Dest. And so some interesting rumors, just want a quick thoughts on this, especially with Dest's rise, uh, exciting play, and really that modern fullback that can go up and attack and take on players 1v1. You see that all over the league now, just transcending here. And he's been linked with Bayern Munich. So that is you know pretty interesting, uh, I guess, on, on my opinion. In a perfect scenario, I would maybe not rush this. I would like maybe either the second half of this season finish out strong and then maybe into the first half or a whole nother year at Ajax and just stay the starter consistency, but and then maybe move to Bayern or somewhere. But again, it's it's tough. It's it's a weird position where I know some some fans have said, "Oh, you don't. You, he should go. It's a great opportunity to develop." I mean, Alfonso Davies is over there, and some other players you can see at Adams, and everyone kind of doing uh, doing well, you know, in the Bundesliga. Um, but Davies, yeah, Bayern, and then I think um, with uh, their lack of depth in that position too, uh, Desk could be an asset. But you never know with Bayern and um, you know picking up players and who's coming through the academies. Uh, yeah, it's it's just an interesting um, scenario for Des because I think Byron made an offer or is uh, rumored at that 20 mil um, or maybe it was lower than that. But I know uh, Ajax was targeting maybe that 25 to 30 uh, million range, which is exciting value to see, especially for an American player. Um, you know, always happy about that. But yeah, I think, again, Des has all the, the tools and tangibles. He's just little inexperienced defending one in V one. He still needs to improve his defending, but offensively in the Bundesliga, especially for Bayern, that would just be a lethal force with all that speed and, uh, you know, creativity and attacking and one V one abilities they have there at that club. Um, I think he would still do really well. And I know he's mentioned that he'd love to go to Spain sometime with the, the Barcelona's or teams like that. But uh, I think the sky's the limit for Dest and, uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting scenario, but in my opinion, and I'd love to get yours on this too, so comment below what you think and your thoughts are, but I'd like to see Dest, you know, maybe just stick it out a little longer, maybe I'm being a little too conservative on that issue, but yeah, just let me know in the comments below. Um, but again, nonetheless, it's great having an American linked to a, a huge German giant like uh, Bayern Munich. So now, guys, uh, I think we're going to head over to Quick Kicks. 
So guys, uh, I guess this is only my favorite time of the show. Um, I know Austin would say it is his as well, but I think you guys already know. Let's get into Quick Kicks. Let's see who could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altidore over the wall! So guys, to start off quick kicks, it's going to be Chris Richards over for Byron 2. Actually scored a fantastic goal and started to play the full 90 in a 4-2 win uh, against Victoria Colm. So congrats to Chris getting another goal there. Um, and heading over to Spain, we're going to touch on Shaq Moore. And he started and played uh, 85 minutes for uh, Tenerife in their 4-2 win. Uh, so congrats to Shaq uh, picking up more minutes there in Spain. Now, heading over to the championship, uh, Cameron Carter-Vickers got the start and played the full 90 for Luton Town. Unfortunately, um, you know, they're not doing so well, uh, at the bottom of the table there, and they lost uh, 1-0 to Cardiff City. And Conrad De La Fuente uh, played 21 minutes, got subbed in for Barcelona B, uh, and a 3-2 loss, excuse me, to Villarreal B. So good to see Conrad getting some more minutes to Barcelona B. We'll have to monitor that contract situation. And uh, our boy, Charlie Kelman, <clears throat> excuse me, over in League One, uh, played, uh, started and played uh, 82 minutes in a 2-1 loss to Blackpool. So unfortunate news there. Now heading over to uh, Schalke and the U19s, uh, Matthew Hope started and played uh, 66 minutes in a 2-0 uh, win against Victoria Cole as well. So um, good to see uh, Matthew getting some more minutes. I know uh, he had a goal in the, the last game or two, so congrats to him there. And now uh, heading over to uh, Brazil, Johnny Cordoza uh, got the start for Internacional and uh, played the full 90 in a 2 nothing win. So uh, congrats to Johnny there. And heading back to Germany for Hoffenheim's, uh, Hoffenheim, excuse me, their U19s, uh, Quincy Butler started um, and he actually got a goal in the 90th minute there in a nice 4 uh, nothing win against Ulm. So congrats to uh, Quincy. And uh, last but not least, our uh, exciting uh, duo from Young PSV, we have uh, Chris Gloucester, who started and went the uh, the full 90 there. Um, so he's been getting some minutes in an unfortunate 3-2 loss to uh, the Grava Shop, if I'm saying that right. Um, you know, correct uh, my pronunciation there. But yeah, and then also um, we had Richie Ledesma. Um, played the full 90 and actually picked up an assist. So he's really making an impact there. Um, we hope to see him in the, you know, Gloucester and even over on Young Ajax, uh, Mendez soon uh, with the first teams because they're uh, they're knocking on the door there. So guys, thank you all for watching this episode. Make sure you like this video and subscribe down below. And again, with our social media pages, Instagram, Twitter, um, all that great content that we've been putting out. Um, continue to watch it. Thank you for liking and uh, commenting um, below, especially in our videos here. We really appreciate you guys. You know, as it is our 20th episode in the third season, so we're going to keep this rolling uh, because we have some friendlies in March with the senior team, um, like Reyna and even some other players trying to merge, like Dwayne Holmes, Adam's back. Uh, hopefully Pulsa gets healthy. Um, McKinney's back for Schalke, which I mentioned. So all these players that I'm mentioning, um, you know, they're all working to one thing. You know, you just got to trust the process because one day we will win the World Cup.